Unfortunately, mics are live, so with that, we'll go to the first question to Steve Gelbs. Uh, David over here. Um, when you were envisioning what this team would look like, what it would play like this season, um, was last night, especially the late innings, kind of the, the ideal, what you had in mind? Sure, yeah, I, I, love, uh, I love late inning comebacks and exciting baseball and um, certainly the activity on the bases late in the game, I, I think shows that we can be a multi-dimensional team, um, create runs in a variety of different ways. Um, but more than anything, the last couple of nights last week, just the energy coming from the team, uh, I think has been great for all of us to see. Um, that's really tough to manufacture um, from a front office perspective, like it just has to sort of happen, and it's a product of um, coaches and a coaching staff working really hard to create an atmosphere. It's a product of players believing in each other, and I think genuinely enjoying spending time with each other. And so to see that early in the season um, on a couple of different nights has been great for me to see. Tim? You say that energy can be tough to manufacture from a front office perspective, but do you, when you're building a team, try to find guys that could spark that kind of chemistry? So you, you'd love to try to do that. Um, and so the answer is yes, we try. It's, it's really tough to predict. Um, and it's, not only, it's because it's not only the individuals, it's how the individuals actually mess, mesh with each other. Um, and, and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't. Um, but, but I do think coaching staffs and, and managers have a lot to do with that. And, um, and I think Mendy uh, and Cookie have a little bit of a nice job of promoting that type of atmosphere. Tony? Carlos just updated us on JD Martinez, but what is your expectation just on how long this, this problem is going to take to be a healthy player for you? Yeah, so it's the, look, it's unlikely on the, on the trip. Um, you know, uh, certainly my expectation is shortly thereafter, um, if not on the trip. Uh, uh, so what does he need to show in terms of, you know, whether coming at bats in actual games? And yeah, I, I don't know that he needs to show anything. I think he just needs to get into a spot where he says, I'm good to go. Uh, I feel good and I'm ready. Um, yeah, I don't know that from you know, like an eval standpoint, I don't know that we're necessarily looking for anything. Yeah. You mentioned before uh, coaches and Mendy. What has impressed you about Mendy so far through the first two, three weeks of the season? I think he's been he's been very steady um, from day one of spring training through today, um, <coughs> and that's so important over the course of a major league season. You're going to go through ups and downs. You're going to go through losing streaks and winning streaks, and um, understanding that. A long season, and there are going to be times where it's tough. And, and believe in yourself, believe in the process, and, and he's done a great job. And then also, uh, there's a couple of guys in the minor leagues that are really impressing. Um, how closely are you keeping an eye on someone like Christian Scott, for example? And um, is, it, is there a possibility that you might see someone like that at some point this season? Sure, we're, we're watching the minor leagues every single day. Um, and it's, it's, we're talking about the minor leagues every single day at all levels. And what Christian Scott has done has been great. It, it's frankly, I think, what a lot of us expected he was going to be able to do. He's a really talented pitcher. Um, he's feeling good, he's healthy, and so we expect him to go down and have success. Uh, and, and what he needs to do is to continue to do that. And I certainly have confidence that he's going to be able to do that. And when the opportunity presents itself, he'll be ready. How aware were you of J.D. Martinez's level of readiness when you first met him? Um, we talked to, to his representation um, plenty, and I think J.D. did a very nice job of, of keeping himself in shape um, during the downtime before he signed. Um, and I think as he's got gotten going, he, he kind of ran into the same level of back stiffness that plagued him um, over a couple different points in his career. And, was pretty confident that the way the Dodgers treated it last year really helped him throughout the year. Um, and so uh, we've opted to treat it the same way. Are you, are you surprised that it's taken this long for him? Um, I, I don't know. I think uh, we didn't have a defined time frame. I certainly think had he not had this back stiffness, he, he would have been here all already. So the back stiffness probably delayed this a little bit. Andy? Uh, my question was similar to Manny, so I don't know if there's anything to add, but you said that it was 
but as part of the manager and coaching staff to create that kind of player buy-in. So I was just going to ask you what you've seen from Carlos and, and the coaching staff that have yeah, created that so far. The, the consistency and positivity throughout um, and, and the recognition um, that uh, we have to stay together through all of this and, and modeling that um, I think is really important. Um, David, as you evaluate what you have on the roster, especially being new, and you have an eye towards moves you might have to make at some point in the next little while, little while. do you assess things or evaluate things in segments of 10 games or 20 games? I mean, how do you avoid whatever temptation there might be to make an impulsive decision or make a decision that when you look back on it, you might not think was informed enough? I think ideally we wouldn't have to make a decision until we're 45 games into a season. Um, that's impossible, obviously. We, we have to make roster decisions um, often on a nightly basis, and so we, we do the best we can um, to weigh the, uh, the, the near-term information, um, near-term performance um, with the longer-term track record of a player, and there's a lot of art involved in that. It's not, um, it, it's, it's, it's not scientific sometimes. Um, but we do our best. Uh, we do our best to do that and make the best decisions possible. But clearly, um, avoid avoiding impulse, um, avoiding reactionary decisions, um, generally proves beneficial. What is the art involved in that? I think it's a, it's a lot of conversation and getting input from all sorts of different sources um, and understanding where players are at a particular time, how it's going to fit into future usage patterns, um, what the coaching staff sees. Um, what various segments of our front office sees, and, and then ultimately we make the best decision we possibly can, um, understanding that early in the season it's, it's, a, it's a little bit tougher um, because you have you have just fewer data points to go on. Hey Dave, I know that the back player up here gave you is unpredictable, but given that there's always a little bit of you know when you would come to the team, is there any I don't know regret or second guess you come out from with your input initially? Or is, was it always going to be difficult to have him on the roster with other young players as well? No, I think I think with where we are um, and how we're using the DH spot and, and how Brett has played, I think the guys uh, on the roster have done a really nice job. I think Brett has done a really nice job of um, solidifying third base and, and playing a very quality third base over there. And I think the way Mendy has rotated guys through that DH spot, both um, you know, allowing DJ to get going, but also allowing guys like Nimmo or Marte to get off their feet occasionally um, has, has proven beneficial for us. Thank you. David, just, <clears throat> I know you guys will <clears throat> evaluate things when you, when you get a chance to step back, but just with, with JD, is there any feeling that <clears throat> maybe some of this was the, the stiffness or what slowed him down as, as a result of, of, even if it's his own eagerness, just, just pushing a little too much too fast? Um, it's, that's always possible. Um, certainly, that, that, that's always possible. I think JD wants to get out there as quickly as possible. Um, I think these guys are all wired to want to move as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm also cognizant that this is uh, this is something that that has popped up for him um, over the course of his career, and, and we'll knock it out and, and get him going. Abby, you've made the move with Tehran, and then you decided to give Budo a little bit of run here. How comfortable are you with the starting pitching depth as it stands right now? I think those guys are doing a really nice job. I think the way Budo has come up and, and given us very, very competitive outings, throwing the ball at a very high level, um, gives us confidence that, that we're in a good place right now. And then um, we've got a number of arms, quality arms, that are going to get healthy here um, over the next month or so. And, and that's also very encouraging. Are you looking to supplement the depth at all? We're always looking. Um, we're, we're always going to look to get better. Um, that's true on the staff. That's true um, on the position player grouping. Uh, so I, th I think the answer is we're, we're always seeking um, mm -hmm. to improve our organization. Okay. David, when, uh, when the team was 0-5 and it was raining every day, what was Mendoza like those days? Same as we see same, him? Same as you see him today. Yeah. It, we, look, it's not fun to lose. And um, after those games, you walk into the office and and none of us is happy. Um, but we all have pretty good perspective here that it's a long season. Um, and you can still smile and joke and have fun with each other. Um, and, and I think Mendy's got the ability to do that. Was anything he did or said during those 
crimes, you know, a reflection of what you already knew about the guy you hired? I think during those times, it's often the things you don't do. I think, I think during those times, it's, it's being yourself, and it's being okay. consistent, and it's not deviating. Um, and I think Mendy was, is, and was very capable of doing that and demonstrated that. Zach, David, how encouraged are you with what your offense has given you to this point, and just maybe think about the possibility of what it did in this type of game? I think the group has, has fit together nicely. Um, uh, we've gotten contributions at various points here over the first couple of weeks from up and down the lineup, and that's encouraging. We're not just relying on a, on a segment of the group. Um, we've been able to score around the top line. We've also been able to get some big hits out of the bottom line as well. Uh, and I also recognize we have some players who are going to get better here as we go along, um, which makes me think we may not have gotten quite to the upside um, uh, of an offensive unit quite yet. That, that's great. Steve, from a uh, defensive run prevention standpoint, how would you assess the start of the game? Yeah, we, we, that's an area where we can get better, and we will. Um, from a defensive standpoint, um, I, I think we probably had a, a few too many lapses there, um, more than we would have expected coming into the year. Um, but I do believe we have good defenders on this team, and some of those lapses can get magnified early in the season. Uh, but that, that's an area where we can substantially improve. I think we will. Is that like the forty-five game window? You I think that I think that's right. I think. Um, I think getting to that, uh, getting to that point, um, and, and doing a check-in on, on where you are as a team uh, in the various elements of your roster is probably a healthy thing to do. Okay. Uh, just back to JD Martinez, I mean, you mentioned uh, following along with what the Dodgers did to manage his back uh, stiffness last year. What does that look like? Does that mean you're going to be, he's going to have to be managed throughout the year? No, I, I think what the Dodgers did, and certainly what J.D. relays to us, is that this injection that he got um, made him feel really good and, and made it so it wasn't really a thing that has to be managed. He could go out and play. Um, just like any player, he's going to need his off days. Um, he's going to need his time down. Um, but he's certainly pretty confident that uh, with this type of injection that he got in L.A. Um, was very helpful. Tell me. What is the likelihood that Jesse Cota saying that he's ready when he's pushed out of the game? Um, right now, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think it'll be too far after that, um, but I couldn't handicap eligibility and eligible end of May, last week of May. I, could, I couldn't handicap when he was on that game. Uh, Mark, off of, the, off of the defensive question, the issues that you guys have had slowing down the closing running game, has that been uh, a surprise to you, and, and what do you attribute that to? Yeah, it has been a little bit of a surprise. Um, it's something that we talked a lot about during spring training, that we focused on during spring training. Um, and, and certainly, yes, that's an area where I think we will get better. Andrew? Uh, how, do you, how do you view the depth of the bullpen, given kind of the attrition that yeah. set in early this season with the number of games and the short amount of time that you guys have had? So part of that attrition is, is due to just the way the roster rules work early in the season, um, where you don't have the ability to recall um, players on option. We've gotten through that a little bit. We knew just by the way we structured the pen um, with some out of options players that there was going to be some natural attrition. Um, you're not going to get through a major league season with the same seven relievers all year. Um, so that, that was sort of understood and it was just a matter of, of when and who. Um, but I still feel like we've got really quality arms in AAA that are gonna be able to help us over the course of the season. Yeah. David, what have you uh, thought of Francisco's Lindora start? I know you said the guys are gonna get better as they go along, but his, his start was pretty high open at the plate. Um, I, he's, look, he, from the left side, he's off to a slow start. From the right side, he's swinging it pretty well. Um, He's gone through rough stretches over the course of his career at various points. I think this is one of those things that um, if it happened in June, we'd notice it, but it wouldn't be perhaps quite as magnified as it is right now. He's a really good hitter. Um, he's physically in a very good spot, uh, and, and I expect he's going to get himself out of this. Yeah. On Senga, has this period where he's kind of started playing catch but not gone off the mound yet, is that is this taking about as long as you expected, or is it maybe a, a bit longer? Um, I think once he started throwing, this has taken about what we expected. Um, 
you know, probably took us a little longer than I originally expected to get him throwing. Um, but once he started throwing, this is, this is pretty much on schedule. Right. Hearing about all these pitching injuries, uh, and seeing Jack Fisher here, I actually saw him pitch. He pitched deep into games, pitched often, yeah. and had a pretty long, durable career. So did a lot of his 60s counterparts. I was curious if you find that amazing as, a, as an analytics guy and what might be the reason for, for that versus today. Sure. I, I, I wish I had the reason. <laughs> um, I think this is an enormously complex issue. I think it's a really important issue, um, one of the more important issues that's faced our industry in a long time. Um, I'm glad that it's getting the, the discussion that it deserves right now, um, and I think we probably need to get um, all stakeholders talking together on this one um, to, to try to figure something out, um, because it, ha it has gotten to a point where I think it's concerning for all of us, um, and it should be. Andy? Uh, was, was Diaz's velocity last night different enough for you to take a look at that, or, or is that just within the normal range? No, that, that's within normal range, and, and you know, back-to-backs early in, in early in the season, um, not concerning for me. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah.